Great, okay. Hello. Okay, hello. Um, so tonight this is going to be my first ever proper stream. So I'm going to be playing Gran Turismo Sport. Um, this is the eighth or ninth of Gran Turismo game actually, because they've uh, there's six main games. Seven has just been announced as the um, uh, first one, for PlayStation Five. Uh, however, there have been a couple of sub games, you know, little prologue versions or special versions that I've just focused on one particular um, aspect of the series. Some people would kind of lump sport in that, although it um, it is the only proper Gran Turismo game that's actually come out on the PlayStation 4. For some strange reason, um, they really did um, kind of short changes a little bit with, the, with, with Gran Turismo for PlayStation 4, because the, the previous consoles, most of them have had more than one Gran Turismo game. Uh, Whereas with PlayStation 4, we didn't get any. So we did get Gran Turismo Sport, um, which is not a full sequel. It's not um, Gran Turismo 7, because Gran Turismo 7 is coming out. So you skip a whole console between 6 and 7. Um, but it is a pretty good game in its own right. There's a lot to it. Um, it's often slated for not having much of a single player or career mode. Uh, but I hope what I show you through this stream and if we keep doing it for a while uh, through more streams There is actually quite a lot to it. It's definitely not one of the series that I think should should be missed at any, any rate um, It is quite heavily focused towards online racing, which you would expect given the um, you know, The day and age that we're living in uh, but the, you know, there is a lot of single-player content in there as well and there's significant amount of cars and, and uh, not quite as many as previous Gran Turismo games um, some of them have seven eight hundred um, but there's a good few hundred cars in there. there's lots to choose from and there's some interesting ways in which to try and make the racing a little bit uh, fairer um, a little bit um, I don't want to put it um, yeah, like like the, there's ways that they try and balance some of that out, try and balance out the way that the, the, the game plays. Um, so this is a fresh save on it. I've not done anything on this save other than uh, just came on earlier just to change some of the settings. I've took off the, the music during the races and things like that because there's a lot of uh, copyrighted music on there, so you, you know, I won't be able to save any clips or anything like that. I'm not so sure about the, um, uh, the music in the background portion like you're hearing now I'm not so sure whether that is going to trigger copyright notice or not so we'll see how we go with that if it does, if it does, if it does if it, we'll stick with it, if not we'll take it off the next time so the game, this is the main menu you, know, you see there's uh, some nice pretty car displays and you get lots of little random factoids coming up, not just about not just about uh, car history but about other random important events as well the Berlin Wall coming down and that kind of thing um, so with the with the menu you've got a few different areas that are worth having a little look at. Um, so you've got a, a menu here that's my menu, which has got all drive information, all kinds of things. Um, what how far and as you can see I've done done nothing so far really with this uh, save at all. I just came on, did a quick arcade race to test things out, make sure everything was working. And yeah, so we started with a, a totally fresh fresh set up here. You've got your options where you can change your, your controller settings and things like that. So I'm going to be using, worth mentioning, I'm going to be using the wheel and pedal and gear stick setup, um, the Logitech G29. It's my first ever wheel. I've had it about three weeks. Um, and I'm pretty impressed so far. I've, I've played with a couple of other wheels that I've got like higher force feedback and kind of more information transmitting to you through the pedals and the wheel itself. But for its for its price, this is it's a pretty stunning wheel really. You, you can do a lot with it. It's very accurate, um, nice weight to it, nice leather leather grip. Um, and you do get quite a lot of information fed back to you through the sensors and through the, the, the motors, the rumble strips and all of that kind of thing. So it's not just the work, not just the way that the car pulls to and from you as the weight changes, but also if you're going over a, a, a bump, if you get a little nudge from the back, you might just feel that, you know, kind of feel like in, in a wheel. So that's a great, really useful thing to have. Um, so the 
control, there's options in here. You can see you know, yeah, Logitech G29 Drive, of course, that's my wheel. Uh, while I'm here, I might actually have a quick look and see what the, where the indicators are, because I've seen people using them, L2 and L3. Left indicator, all right, there's a chance to see the indicator. Okay, okay, so we might try that later. You can do X button to flash and toggle your high beams, so if somebody cuts you off or something that upsets you, you can flash them all. Um, yeah. It's a sim, so, you, it, well, it's a sim cade, but it's it's more sim than cade. Um, okay, so without further ado, I think probably one of the best things to do would be look at getting into a race and getting into a car. So we've got a few different options in how we want to start that. Um, we've got the arcade mode, so the arcade mode is just going to be against AI opponents. Um, it's going to be fairly, you can set the difficulty, you can set easy, medium, hard, you can choose a bunch of different cars, you don't have to buy them or anything like that. Campaign mode, now this is where we are going to have to buy cars, uh, we're going to have to buy cars to, to, to play this part. Uh, you can see we start with 50,000 credits, you do get a gift car as well, which was the um, uh, the WRX STI Type S14, so um, we've got a little sort of nice nice mixture of road and rally car you can do you, you could enter a lot of different races with that car so it's a good gift card to start you with um, we will find that you get a lot of gift cards as you kind of race through it as well um, lots and lots of opportunities for the game to reward you with things and it gives you cards all the time so you, you never really should have to be spending actual money on any of the content for this game um, you can pay for the cars per car if you want if you really want to unlock something um, but you shouldn't really need to. You, should, you, you can generally earn enough credits and you win enough cars anyway. That you, you are to play. The only actual piece of DLC, proper DLC in the game, is the Lewis Hamilton Time Tar Trial Challenge, which I've not had a, had a look at yet really, but that is, I assume what it is, says on the tin. You're going to get a little virtual Lewis taking you through some uh, driving experiences and giving you, sharing the knowledge that I've made him a, a, a 6.5 times world champion. Um, and I'm sure you get to, to race and ultimately beat his times, which, yeah, you probably wouldn't do that in a real car, would you, let's face it. It's quite, quite handy at the old driving, isn't it, Hamilton? So, yeah, nice to see you in there. You had Sebastian Vettel for the last, uh, for Gran Turismo 6, so... Who will we get for Gran Turismo 7, do you think, as our F1 driver? Will it be Valtteri Bottas? Nico Hulkenberg? Max Verstappen? Could be Max Verstappen. But Max is a big eye racing fan, so I hear. Um, so, first thing we need, we're, we're going to do is probably should learn how to drive. I think that would be that would be sensible. So if we go into the campaign mode, you'll see that you've got a, a bunch of different things that you can choose. The GT League is just going to be classic Gran Turismo, um, lots of different cars, and lots of different races that have got a different category. So there'll be like Miata, Mazda MX-5 races. There'll be um, something with Subaru, something with Fords, an American versus Europe type competition, all that kind of stuff. We'll have a little look at those in a bit. Then you've got, down here, you've got Circuit Experience. It's a really, really nice little feature, this one. Um, I like it a lot. You, it takes you through each of the circuits on the game and breaks them down bit by bit, different lines into different corners, really, just helping you maximise that lap time. Um, mission challenge where you get a lot of different missions that you can kind of do so it's not just overtaking there are other things you know set specific sector times and do uh, I'm trying to think now what, what else there is other than overtaking it's mostly overtaking as you would expect um, but it's a real variety of challenges there's lots of different um, cars that throw up in the missions lots of different racetracks there's the stuff that you probably wouldn't do anywhere else in the game so it's, it's worth a go and then the classic driving school so before we do anything really we're going to need to get a license because the, the good thing with uh, Gran Turismo games is they always base um, the single player ranking system on licenses so we're going to have to learn how to actually drive the car before we start it and that's not a bad thing at all for me because as I say this, I've only had this wheel three weeks. I'm still very much just getting used to it. Prior to that, I played with the old um, Dual Shock 4. Prior to that, I played with the Dual Shock 3, the Dual Shock 2, the Dual Shock 1. And the old, what was the first PlayStation pad called that never even had a, a 
grumble function in it. Because um, I've played each, each, each and every one of the games since the first one that came out on the PlayStation 1. And I have been with a pad that whole time. So you can imagine from a muscle memory point of view, um, adjusting to the wheel is going to be a little bit a little bit difficult. And, I, and I've noticed already, you know, that not I'm not instantly quicker. With a bit of practice, I can be quicker than I can with a pad, but it's not instantly quicker. And there are still a few little quirks to uh, driving a racing game with a wheel that I'm getting used to. It now. Our first challenge. Um, pretty simple, really. This is going to be a start and stop challenge. So all we're going to have to do is accelerate, let the, drive the car, I don't know, a few hundred, how far is this one, a few hundred metres, and then brake within a specified point. And hey ho, would you, would you look at it, we've got a little Mazda sports car, uh, a little MX-5 type roadster type reality type sports car. Um, and if, and if, any, if you've played Gran Turismo before, you know, you, the, the game is absolutely lathered with these things. There's certain uh, Japanese sports cars that just come up over and over and over again. And a few American ones as well, and a few European ones, but there's, it, it, it's a Japanese-centric game. It's just fine to produce some of the world's best cars, so why not? Um, so, well, let's, let's begin. So, I'm not sure if I've changed the setting yet to put it in. Let's just see what happens. Yes, I have. I'll stop because I had to change the gear there. So we're just going to drive up to this line and stop. Is it? Or do we just have to get there? Ah, well, we got gold anyway. I think we just had to get there in that one. Is that just starting? Starting and stopping. Okay. So. So there we go, you'll see here as well, you, you get prize money straight away, you get distance, now that's interesting. The distance, um, if you drive a certain amount of miles every day, I think it's about 40 or 50 miles, uh, you'll get just a free car just for doing that. So really, really easy way um, just, just to get free cars. If you just log on for a bit, play a racetrack that you like, or go on some online races, um, pretty much any time I'll pick it up, I'm, I'm going to beat that 50 miles and I'm going to get a free car out of it. So as I say, it's, it's another reason why you don't really need to be purchasing a lot of cars in this or spending money. So I'm going to go through two gates this time, there's a little bit of steering involved. Not a lot of steering involved, but there was a little bit of steering involved. Oh, laser gear change there, let's see, and we've still got gold. I mean, yeah. These early challenges, pretty simple really. Um, if you can't get gold on these challenges after a few tries, it's maybe not the game for you. Because um, the first few, as it gets trickier, once we get into license two, um, there will start to be some challenge there. You will, you know, you won't just breeze straight through them. But if you've never picked up a racing game before, I mean, I was showing um, my son this the other day, and, and he was doing these very basic ones. And sit for a six-year-old, yeah, it takes him a few games to get used to it. So it's nice that I've got it in there. It, you know, it's, it's great for the, uh, for the younger drivers out there. And they're a little bit of fun that gets you warmed into it. See there, we just had to let off a little bit of one of those corners so we didn't go um, flying through it. I think I could have probably took the whole thing without lifting. I can still find time in there, but we're just going to get, we're just going to race through these ones because, you know, they're not going to, um, they're not going to be very entertaining for me to play or for anybody to watch. See, we've done three missions already, three uh, license tests already, we haven't even driven a lot yet. I promise it does get more exciting game than this. So, using brakes to stop, basic operation. So this is going to be uh, actually stopping now. So already we've used the pedal over at the right hand side, and then we're going to use the one in the middle. So let's see how that feels for us. Um, just to mention while I'm waiting for the thing to load, the, the, the G29 um, does come with a full three pedal set. Some, some pedal sets just have brake and accelerator because not a lot of games use a clutch. Uh, but this one does have a clutch and you can get a shifter as well, which we've got here. I'm not going to be using the shifter very much because I've not got a very good um, setup for it as yet. And when I use it, it makes the table wobble about. So if you can see the camera, that's, that's me using the shifter. Um, I may use it a little bit more once I bothered to splurge a bit on the other game. I've got the thing to sit in. Oh, there's one thing 
have. So, what's next? So we've got to get to that blue zone and stop there. And just a bronze. I think I was actually not fully on the pedal when it started. That's embarrassing. Isn't it? Got a bronze in the third one of the first license tests. You actually want to break a little bit before you get to that zone, because obviously you want to stop at the earliest point in the zone. If you break before the zone, it won't pass you. If you break and you go out of the zone, it won't pass you. You have to land in that zone, so obviously you need to break 10, 20 metres earlier. Um, as you as you go through the game, you'll find breaking points and things like that are really important. Um, so you can often look for little indicators on that. And I think with the next test, we're going to probably do that, because this is going to be the same thing uh, but in a much more powerful car. So this is well, not much more powerful, a little bit more powerful car. You see the, get, the, the cars are all um, set in different ranking classes. This one's an N200. Um, and that really helps when you get to the online stuff and the matching. Um, because you can, you can get you can, you can match easily cars that are reasonably similar in power. And Sort of between the blue cones and the red cones, and that turns out to be a good guess with this car's braking distances. Um, as we've got gold on the first try, you might notice if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a couple of bars, and on those bars, you will see where I am braking and where I am accelerating. So, if you watch, if you watch the white and red bars, you can see what I'm doing with my feet. I know some streamers who do racing have a third camera view, so you can actually see the feet at the same time. Um, no, nobody wants to see my feet. So you might notice straight away that I am fully down on the throttle at the start of the race. Um, and that's because at the minute we've got traction control on. So with traction control on, the fastest way to... Um, accelerate is going to be just to slam your foot to the floor really. We're not going to keep traction control on for very long once we start getting into the races I'm going to take it off because the advantage of um, having a, a pedal setup is that you can be a lot more precise with your inputs. You know, you've got a lot of play between um, the, the start of the accelerator and the end of it. Um, very similar to a real car, you know, you've got, it, it does feel very much like a car um, to drive if you are a driver and you're familiar with that. So, you know, we want to we want to utilise that. With the D-pad, you can turn traction control off as well. And if you're going to play with the D-pad, I recommend you do, because the, uh, the, the there's various analog inputs on a on a PlayStation D-pad, namely the, um, the the back triggers and the and the pads with the, the, the direction of front stick. Right? So you can use those to smoothly put the power down and put the brakes on and turn and all of that sort of stuff because smoothness is really an important thing to get when you're doing racing games. Uh, there's apparently another mode where you can just use the motion function and give it some of that. I haven't played it yet so it would feel a bit like playing a, uh, a Nintendo Wii uh, Mario Kart but hey give it a go it might suit your driving style. So what we're going to do now we're going to drive 200 metres with class car and we're going to stop. I don't want to run off track, have contact with all the options, so we're still doing starting and stopping one. <laughs> just that's seven. We're still just starting and stopping, we haven't got to anything better than that yet. You can see this car is immediately much more powerful, so we need to get a lot more on braking distance. Really want to break that. Um, so yeah, so the more powerful the car, the faster you're going to go in a quicker space of time, the earlier you're going to have to hit those brakes. Um, doesn't always hold quite true 100% of the time because obviously some cars have got phenomenal uh, brakes on them as well depending on you know, what kind of setup it is. Certainly some of the formula cars um, are quite scary in the braking because they stop so fast it's, it's, hard, you know, it's, it's hard to even process the speeds at which you need to slam your foot on, take your foot off, get it onto the other one. So when, you, when you're driving those sorts of cars a lot of people will use left foot braking rather than switching the feet between the pedals like you do. Um, and I've not tried left foot braking yet, let's say, not had the wheel very long. When I have, I might try it, we'll see how it goes. 
So now I'm going to try turning a corner. Exciting stuff. This is this is a big league now, boys. We're turning corners. Uh, again, we've got a Mazda Roadster. So a, a slightly different model of Mazda Roadster. There's, there's generally about two, three thousand variants of a Mazda, Mazda Roadster on any given Gran Turismo game. I'm exaggerating how much of effect, but there are a awful lot of um, Mazda Roadsters. I think I've probably taken that full, but I didn't read the license description, the, the description of the test, so I'm not sure if I... Uh, not sure, not sure if it was a corner that I would have, have to, had to lift up a little bit. So I did lift a little bit off the throttle there, just going around the corner. But I mean, as corners go, that one was pretty simple. So particularly exciting there. So next event. Oh, the next event is a prize. Lovely, we do like prizes, don't we? We received a gift card. So just for those straightforward little exercises. You've got a gift card already. It, it, it takes about five minutes if you do this when you're not streaming. Um, yeah, it's a little bit boring for experienced players, but you get some you get some goodies out of it for free. Um, it's not the worst grind, really. So yeah, that's it. We've just earned that car. It's telling us we can go and buy cars at Brand Central. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Just go through a few more of these tests first. Um, there are 24 tests within a license now, so that is really quite a lot of tests to do. Uh, this is going to be another corner, so um, decelerate if you don't think you'll make the turn. A little clue there, and I think that means that we're actually going to have to have a little, maybe a little bit more significant look. This one. Tiny little lift there, just took us. Um, yeah, another, another fairly easy goal, really. Um, this is probably where, if you've never driven a car game before, if, you, if it's your first entry to racing games, this is where you'll start to feel a bit of a challenge when we get to this, the, these sorts of tests. Because um, if you play a racing simulator game, it is hugely, hugely different from playing an arcade driving game. If you played games like Gran Turismo, Need for Speed, um, Driver, those kinds of you know fast-paced action, loads of stuff going on, they take a very, very liberal approach to how cars um, physics. It's almost like dry, trying to drive um, you know one of those things that they clean ice hockey rinks with at 200 miles an hour. They, they, they just slide all over the place and then have massive amounts of grip in other places. It's, it's all kind of faults, and you often don't have to brake very much or you know really adjust your, your inputs much to, to control the cars. With the simulator, you do have to think about all those things. You, you, you've got to be realistic about your, about your cornering. As a game, Gran Turismo um, leans far more towards the sim than the arcade. It's got hints of arcade about it, and the physics aren't perfect, but by and large, you need to be thinking about every... Um, Every corner, as if you were exactly the same. Way. How much speed can I take into it? What sort of lap do I need to take? Any experience at all with um, more of the simi type driving games, you will whistle it in. It's, it's only a few of them. If you're an absolute beginner, like, you might need a few tries. So, this time we're going to have a more powerful car. This is going to be one of the Group 4 cars. Um, two classes of car in Gran Turismo you've got the N cars, which is just standard road production cars, um, and they're sold to you as their stock variant. You can do a few tunes to them, change the tyres, upgrade a few parts. Um, and then you've got the racing cars, and the racing cars are in groups um, with the higher, um, the, the, the more more difficult to control, the faster, more powerful cars uh, be in your group one, two, and then as they go down to the lower classes of racing cars, I think it's like an S class and uh, sort of a couple of other classes. I'm not really sure because I've not done many races on this game at that level yet. Um, I've not really driven any of the formula cars in it or anything like that, so that'll be something interesting for us to maybe have a look at. Further 
Excellent. Short shifted there, but then it was. Hey, hope we got through the corner okay in gold time. So you see now, is, um, I'm having to work a little bit more. There's more inputs going on. You see more inputs in my hands. More, if you could see my feet, you'd see more inputs in my feet. But obviously, you can watch those little bars going up and down um, to see what my feet are doing. And this is warming us up to what you know, what a full lap's going to be like. Because in a full lap, you'll be amazed at how many different inputs you're going to need to make to get around this course. It sounds simple, you're going to drive around a, a, a racetrack that's got, I don't know, 10 turns and it's two and a half miles long. You should be able to do that first time, right? Probably not, because there's there's a lot of learning. You've got to learn each 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 corner, you've got to learn what speed you can take it in, and then for every car that you drive around there, it's going to be different again. So there's, there's, there's always something to be learned. It's why racing games can be really addictive because you'll, you'll know there's always a faster time out there. You can set the best time you're ever going to set, but there's a part of you that goes out a little bit faster than that. Um, lots and lots of tracks in this game. This is one that I'm not awfully fond of just because it's, it's a really difficult track to drive. Um, it's, it's called Big Willow. It's a real race track, big old springs in America. It's got a few different uh, layouts, and there's a few different courses around the, the whole complex. You'll see that sort of off in the background. Um, it's a nice course, it's got some really lovely flowing corners. However, it's got a couple of really, really tricky ones. And as you can see, it's all desert on the outside. If you get a wheel on that desert and start spinning, you will you know, spin halfway across, halfway across the American Midwest. It, 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 it's a really difficult track to recover on if things go go wrong, um, particularly when you get to online events. You can get colliding, things can get tasty. Okay, so what's uh, our next challenge? Enter the corner after reducing speed. So this is going to be braking before a corner, um, and that's a key skill to learn when you're doing any sort of racing game. Vast, vast majority of your slowing down to be the equal that it needs to be before you get there. That was a lot, long time before you get there. So I may have to do that one again, but I think I've got a lot of good time out there. <laughs> um, so for this, really, I'm going to need to set a breaking point. I'm going to need to look at that really easy in this particular track to look at the right hand side because all these different. that corner they're going to be a, you know, the easiest, easiest one you're going to find so with there we did it just between about 150 we can obviously go a little bit deeper than that i think i don't need to scrub as much speed off the car as well i think you know, just let it roll through with a bit more speed on it grab some floor off i actually did a little bit of trail break in there which is something we'll come on to a little bit later um, it's it's um, basically a more advanced braking te technique, but for now we'll just try and stick to braking in a straight line. Um, you want to do most of your braking in a straight line because it keeps the car stable. When you are braking and turning, um, you're throwing all the weight of the car around in all kinds of uncomfortable ways, and unless you get it just right, you you, you can very easily lose the car while braking and turning. Um, and if you go in at any speed at all, braking and turning together is, is going to be an absolutely horrendous for you. You're just going to spin, spin, spin. Um, what you generally need to do when you're coming up to a corner, approaching a corner, is know when your braking point is, brake in a straight line for as long as possible, and then depending on the corner, um, just the first little bit of turning, or you know, the first few, 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 few moments of the corner with just a tiny, tiny little bit of brake left in. Um, that's trail braking, it's quite an, a more advanced technique, we'll come on to that a little bit later on. of a second. There's probably still, I don't know, half a second in that, but you can go faster. 
But we got gold, so we don't need to go any faster than that. That'll do it. So, next one's going to be... Um, pick a marker for breaking. Looks like we've got a much longer um, approach to this corner. And from memory, this corner's um, quite sharp at first, so you do need to get your speed really scrubbed off and reduced. Uh, we are driving, we're going to be driving for this, a Bugatti Veyron Group 4 race car. Uh, so that's going to be pretty quick, isn't it? Let's have a look at that. Okay, with some of these braking ones, you probably won't get it first time, so you need to learn the power a little bit. Show you a little tip because uh, if you're not sure where your braking point's going to be, if you leave some of the um, marking assists on, you'll, there's, there's, there's a cone thing which can be quite helpful. So, you have various different marker assists that you can leave on. You can have a uh, racing light, you can have uh, little floating things that go above the corners, um, and you can have cones. The cones can be really useful. They're, they're usually at the apex of every corner and they take a turn in at every corner. And also somewhere just before the breaking point. So use that as a reference there to help us become a our breaking point. One thing I will say with cones, when you get into online races or any races against the AI that get a little bit messy, it can be a bit of an issue because the cones can move. So if somebody crashes into that car and moves it, you've lost your, your net reference marker. So while they're great in the time trials, um, and they're fine in online racing while they're still there, just watch out for them. Don't rely on them too much. If there's another visual marker that you can see on the circuit, and there will be, because every circuit has, has got visual markers, you know, every other meter, um, you, use another one as well. Just be sure of, you know, what your actually, uh, where your braking point is. So this one, apply the brakes firmly all at once. So this is going to be um, trying to do it all in one nice go because we're going to have quite a powerful car here and we've got quite a sharp turn. Um, so it would be important that we get a braking right, get it right first time. If we were having two or three bites of the cherry on the braking, not only can we lose time because we're slowing down too early before the corner, but that, that can make the car quite squirrely because if there's any direction change at all. Um, multiple break, multiple instances of break. So, long back down this hill. That was that silver bell. So, we could have, we, I, I don't think I did break all in one go there, I don't know. As soon as we've hit that apex, we can start accelerating again. So what's our next move? We're going to reduce a bit. We've got, to, we've got several corners on this one. So apply brakes when the car is travelling in a straight line again is going to be our aim. Finish reducing your speed before entering a corner. Use the curb zones and guardrails as your marker to time your braking when you drive. So again, you know, uh, the curb stones, guardrails, anything like that around the track, it's more of those visual cues that are going to help you decide where your braking points are going to be and where your apexes are so that you know not only when to brake, but when to accelerate. Time. We're going to much, much harder on the brakes. 
sensitive shape of that, that time. I still want a great line for it, to be honest. So I think if we'd done that with proper gear changes, we probably would have got the time there. Second was the recommended gear that it was telling me I should be in. Um, but you'll find quite often with Gran Turismo, you can get away with being a little bit higher up in the gears than the game suggests to you. So that time I just, instead of dropping all the way down second, just kept it in third, kept a bit more speed in the car. It was fairly gentle on the brakes into that corner, to be honest. Because um, it didn't need it. I would want another gift car. looking cars in there but I've got the most boring looking sports coupe it's a, a Jaguar is that um, no Aston Martin sorry Aston Martin V8 it's a nice car it's a nice car just the others look more excited to be honest with you have you tried this yet my menu view your status life on your friends I have not to be honest maybe that's something we'll try if I end up doing some more streets Silver there again, um, meaning there's more time we can take out of that. just the appearance of the ghost car. I've not seen him yet. So the ghost car, when you're doing um, multiple attempts at something, um, it'll show you your best attempts as a kind of ghost car. It's a way to turn it off because occasionally you get distracted. If you're trying to shave very, very fine amounts of time, um, it'll sometimes sort of seem to drive through you and that and that might have put quite distracted. So that should get us on all the time. The key difference there was really that we just let the car run a bit wider out um, so we could keep a bit more speed in it with the entry and then we had more uh, more room to, to go out to the exit. What we're always trying to do with the corner is try and make it as close to a straight line as possible. When your car's going in a straight line, it's, it can do whatever it wants with the power, whatever it wants with its braking because it's in a lovely, lovely stable position. As soon as your star car's turning, it becomes more unstable. You've got to start thinking about reducing your speed, getting careful with your brakes because brakes will make the car do funny things um, when it's turning as well. So what we want to try and do is get the corner as close to a straight line as we possibly can and that reduces the amount of uh, stuff we're going to have to do with it. Now here we have one of my all time favourite corners, this is another real world, um, another real world track, it's from Suzuka. And this is a very, very, very high speed uh, left hander where you just have to kind of just try and lift off a, a little bit. You do have to brake for it in most cars, 
some of the formula cars can take it flat out because uh, they obviously have a bit of downforce pushing them down into the ground and makes them cornering speed much much quicker. Um, so this one, let's see, let's just uh, let's just take you through it and show you show you what we mean about this car. We are going to have to brake a little bit for it to get out, but as little as we possibly can, we can back on the power as quickly as we possibly can. I know from driving that corner many times that there was a ton more time in that of this car, um, simply because I, I didn't need to drift out to the outside of the track. So that's telling me that there's much, much more speed left that I can take. If, if you um, drive the corner and you find yourself in the middle of the road or still on the inside of the road, that's telling you you haven't straightened that corner as much as you can therefore make your entry speed a little bit quicker and then you will maximize the actual of the track and get the, the fastest uh, the fastest time in total for that so this time we're going to be a lot more gentle with the brakes we're just going to lift up the tire a little bit if i don't uh, get in the grass and get all sorts of screw in there that's not good one of the um, things you notice if you're driving the wheel is if you've not got the wheel held at the exact angle that the, um, the car on screen has, you're going to have a bad time when it takes over at this point when it's, uh, it's turning from all the drive into my car. You're not going to need to go into form for that, just a little bit of it. Um, yeah, because what it's, do what it's then going to do is it's going to, as soon as you um, take over, it's going to sense that your wheel is in a different position and immediately try and turn the wheel into that position. So that's why I just <laughs> went straight on the grass at the start of that corner, because I had a little bit of angle left in the steering wheel before, um, before the lesson actually started. So we're nearly there, now we're only a few more events left to complete our first license. Uh, what time we? We've had about 45 minutes on these so far. You can see they're not quick things to do. Um, it, it would take a little, I'm obviously stopping a few times and, and, and chatting to camera, but I'm only really doing that when it's loading. So expect your first hour of the game to be doing a bit of this. Hey ho, what's this big white box in the middle of the screen? So, I think I might have accidentally pressed to get the video out of it. So what have we got this time? We've got the McLaren 650S and we are at the, uh, that looks like the Dragon Trail. So there's a, there's a, a kind of mix of real world and fictional race tracks in this game. I don't think this place exists in real life. I thought that might not be quite perfect there if you notice how it's a little bit wide in that last point. So we'll go again, we will try and get that perfect belt time. Of course, if we do get a full, full set of belts, we will get a nice and powerful belt. Just taking a little bit more aggressive through those corners, breaking a little bit late, turning in a little bit earlier, getting back on the power a little bit earlier. But again, even at the gold times, it's probably a second at least in most of these license tests, if not a little bit more. Um, when you get to the ones where there's more and more corners, you'll find even more time. So I think tonight when we've done this we'll we'll have a look at some of the AI racing, see how, see how that looks. Um, it's it's interesting, the AI. The AI has a lot of quirks to the, to the way it operates. We'll see how they uh, how they pan out. And we'll see if we can get as well onto an online race. Now I'm not sure because I'm so early in the game, I'm not sure what I'm gonna have to do to get my um, levels up to whatever it is to let me race in an online race, so we'll have a look at that, what that entails. Uh, but if we can, we'll try an online race as well. Where you can either get some absolutely beautiful close racing with you know, lots of respect for the 
other drivers on the track and then we'll be trying to be kind of fair and give each other just enough room but still be tough. Uh, or you can just get absolute punk city with cars flying off here, there and everywhere because so nobody's, nobody's given any kind of care about racing and to get whatsoever. It's usually flatter to be honest but it's nice when you do get those um, clean battles. And even if you just do like a, a 10 lap race or something, um, most of it is all shunting and bumping and annoying stuff. Even if a few of those laps are just a nice clean battle with somebody where you're, you know, you're both sizing each other up, that's really enjoyable. You get a lot of pleasure out of it. Um, you see a lot of people on the forums getting really upset and dispirited about the, the punters. And that's understandable, it, it, especially at the high levels, you know, when you're actually racing the rank. But the way the penalty system works is, um, very often the person who's been wronged will end up coming out worse. Sad but true. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still a fun game. Right to it. So this one we're going to drive rhythmically through an S curve. So an S curve is, as you'd expect, it's going to be there's a series of corners that like meander through like that. Um, and that involves quite a lot of interesting stuff going on for the car because if you're if you're imagining a cars travelling down the road and if you've ever felt when somebody turns a corner really sharply you get thrown to the opposite side because of inertia, because of the weight transfer, you know, you you want to remain kind of going where you was going but the car suddenly changes direction you have to you have to end up to go with it. So you get thrown about. And that's happening to every bit of mass within the car. It's all kind of going through all those battles. So when you go from one direction to the other direction quite quickly, that's when things can get quite messy. You have to be really careful with the way that we can make way for S curves. When you get S curves right, really, really pleasurable. When you get them wrong, you just get into a horrible world of spin. Severe on the steering with it there, getting a bit leery, throwing the car around. So, actually, being aggressive is not always the best way to get through the corner. Sometimes it's about being gentle. Seven tenths of a second, so that's a pretty big. If you was doing, if you was taking a corner wrong and you was losing seven tenths of a second every single lap, you're not going to do very well on that track. So whenever you're learning a track, it is worth playing about, and getting a good feel for how that track works, um, and spin up a few times, crash a few times, do you know, take it to those extremes. Obviously, you wouldn't do that in a real car. Um, however. You know, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to push and get the most out of it, you would have to be prepared for that, just as real races do very often, or actually even in practice as a qualifying. Um, so, you know, if you want to get the most out of the track, the most out of the car, you've got to be right on that limit. You do need to practice getting the feel for as much as you can take this. What we've got now, we've got Alfa Romeo 4C, another group for a race car, and we're going for a uh, hairpin. This is about getting, finding the right spot on the hairpin to get the throttle back down. So hairpin is a corner that turns 180 degrees, so you completely back on yourself. And they're usually some of the tightest corners you'll find in racing. We still are doing our best to make a straight line though. So we want to take wide out, wide, sort of wide in, narrow, wide out again. And make that corner as wide and as straight as you possibly can. Even though that seemed quite slow, and I'm sure there's a lot more time in that, that was enough for a gold. Um, hairpins are slow corners, you do need to slow down. Another, hair, uh, another hairpin, but I think this time we're going to have a um, slightly, slightly different track and a slightly different car. It's another Group 4 car. 
Lancer. Um, but it'll have different handling characteristics. This presumably is going to be a four-wheel drive, um, so it may have a little bit more grip to it. And I think with this court, with this hair being quite tight, what they're trying to do is um, give you one that's going to attempt you to get on the truck on the throttle too early. So let's see if we fall for that temptation. That's my first crash, that's not bad, we're on the last license test, I think. And that's the first time I've had a, pro a proper one. Not bad doing this for the first time, she kept streaming and talking all the way through the drive. You may notice there just how wide I went to then come into that corner because again even with a hairpin where it's a tight 90 degrees you can still do quite a bit to widen that out and allow you to carry more speed for a bit. The Suzuka hairpin does tempt you to get back on the power early, you have to wait until you can actually see a little bit of the road straightening up because if you put that power on too early you'll just drift out to the outside of the corner, you're going to have to either slow down or you're going to go off the track. Is a whole chunk of time, so it's all about waiting, being patient, and waiting for the right moment to then stick your foot back on the throttle and get that um, get that significant power. Okay, what have we got next? I think oh, it's the last final license. So we're going to do a whole lap of a track. It's the Kyoto Driving Park. Um, which, I don't know if there actually is a driving park in Kyoto or if this is just another fictional location. But um, yeah, this is one of the more simple tracks on the game, as you can see. It's um, not, not far off being an oval. We've got a little S curve in there, and we've got a little chicane. We've got one very long sweeping corner, and I guess if you can call that a hairpin, it kind of is, but it, it looks like it's going to be. Um, not the slowest hairpin. So we're half a second away from the goal. If I got that hairpin a little bit um, tighter, Just in that corner, because I, I don't think I really made up much time in the rest of the track. Uh, you can see the ghost was fairly close to me on that first corner. So, that concludes... Since A, oh, I think we may just have to go to unlock our prize car. Yes, let's open our presents. 
So because we've unlocked license A, that will unlock the first set of um, races basically in the in the single player. Um, let's hope we've won. Mm. Citroen. What is that? Is that some sort of concept car? GT by Citroen Road Car. Ah, it's a fancy Benevision Road Car. That's what I've seen. So, okay. We've unlocked a few cars then. We've driven 22.6 miles. And we've done our we've done our first license. We can leave the, the license test for a little while now. Uh, let's do something a little bit more exciting with a few more cars on track. And let's try our first race. So we've unlocked some of the arcade tracks as well. That's always nice. We've got more tracks in there to play. So campaign GT League, and this is where we're going to find our uh, our, our sort of regular races um, and find out all about the phone machine. Back to it, and the classic Sunday Cup. Now, every single Gran Turismo game since Gran Turismo One has featured a Sunday Cup, um, which is your absolute box standard entry level way. It's anything can enter it. Um, I think more than more than this. Um, it's more than just a faster one than I've got. I've got an N three hundred. Uh, oh, and I've got an N four hundred. So let's see if it'll let me go in with the. Slightly less powerful. So there may be some more slightly more powerful cars on the track here, we'll see. Um, but sometimes it's fun to go in with not, you know, not the most powerful car. When you're racing against the AI, they tend to be quite predictable. Uh, they're not going to give you a massive amount of challenge, so to make it more interesting for yourself. I recommend going for a slightly underpowered car if you still think you can come out on top. I may not, we'll have to see what we'll have to see what it does. We're racing an oval circuit here. Um, not the most popular type of circuit in Europe, but in America you see an awful lot of oval racing. Uh, sometimes criticised for uh, European fans. You know, maybe it's a little bit boring, it's a little bit same as just watching for the crashes that kind of thing um, I'd have to, to disagree although it's not my favourite kind of motorsport um, a good oval race can be really exciting um, I, I defy anybody who, who, who enjoys motorsport to watch something like the Indy 500 and not at least enjoy something like that because there's a lot of strategy in there there's a lot of tactics there's tactics about you know how you, how you approach each corner and you approach overtaking the cars, um, slipstreaming, I don't want to explain what slipstreaming slip is yet, but um, that's basically going very close to the back of the car to, to get the benefit from them kind of going through the air before you do. Because they're obviously to cut through less air and therefore um, you'll go a little bit faster in their wake. Let's see if we can get a slipstream actually. If I get very close to this car in front, you should see my uh, speed to go up that quickly. As I get that advantage, I'm going to be able to clean up the air. The hole in the air that is kind of punched for me. So can I get past one and two before we even cross the finish line? Maybe if I take up the end of the answer here. Um, so not a victory for a start, we play second, disaster really. Um, I've taken an underpowered car into the race, I, I, I could win it, I've tried it again, but it's been sort of kind of um, We'll go into a sort of race where there's a few more corners. I think that, you know, because I've got cars on the track which have got more power than me, those kind of uh, power circuits like an oval tends to be a problem. But hey ho, 
We got silver out of it, that'll clear the um, Two So again, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the underpowered kind here. This is the Suzuka East course, which is basically just the loop uh, with a couple of the corners joined by the S's. There's going to be a lot more movement in this one, a lot more steering going on, and that's where I should find that I've got the advantage of the AI. I can just say, I don't take great lines. They're very predictable. The only real challenge they present me really is uh, occasionally when you've gone past them, they'll take a nice tricky little swipe at you and just lose your back end, which is really the American police call that a pit maneuver. Not very nice uh, listening to you by an AI that you've just driven past completely cleanly. Interestingly enough, if you do that in a online race, you're going to get a penalty for it. So we've only got three laps here, and we've got 12 places to make it up, so we're going to have to get a bit of a match on. That was one going on the top of this one, slipstream. That's what I was talking about, that's that pit maneuver. It's not like, just as I've gone past them, it's like, no, I'm just gonna have a little the back end there. Absolutely, that would be an absolute outrage if that was in a real race. The students would be all over you, yeah, you'd probably be banned from racing for a significant amount of time. Um, but yeah, the AI just likes to do it. That's with most work for some reason. And that you use those to tune your car, by the way. That, that, uh, you weren't so many of them, and then you can do some tuning. And we've driven 30 miles, so we'll probably be looking at a gift car fairly soon. Or, um, I 
to jump in his mouth and die. Let's see, that's a little poor area. What's going to be an interesting thing to go on? The real world circuits there, you've got Monza, uh, which is famous for its one circuit. Um, uh, racing events out there, too, obviously, although not that many, as I recall, because I think that it's really good. It's actually in a public park, um, so you can find a lot of the classic racetracks around the world, there's not as much racing as I think these ones like that. Um, but there are a few really high profile events in Monza, so it's a uh, high profile. Nürburgring, that's the uh, road course of the, sorry, the Grand Prix circuit for the Nürburgring. It has got the full Nordschleife run here, which is a massive, massive circuit, 14 miles long. So, epic, epic drive. Uh, but we will save that for a later stream. I think for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little go at Monza, because I'll probably, um, probably have a look at the Red Bull Ring. An online race at some point this week. The, the, the weekly online races this week have got one of Suzuka in a kind of lower power, not really lower power, it's still quite high power, just being from the M3, which is a decent sports car. I really struggle with it because it's rear wheel drive and it's, uh, I'm still getting used to be using the pedals and getting that feel for the traction. So I get a little bit sliding with that. I think it's one of those cars as well, that drivers who like a bit of a slide on the back end and get on that a bit. As I say, I prefer that um, quite tight, quite reserved car. I get a little bit of understeer. Um, Monza, interesting track, lots and lots of history. It goes back, way, way back to I think the, the 20s or 30s. Um, started off as a massive high speed oval and then built the Tinfield track. Um, so on top of that, eventually ended up replacing the high speed and for, for pretty sensible reasons really because the high speed oval had some really severely banked corners that had no guardrails on the outside of them and I imagine that was just all like a lot of deaths in the early years and it was just more I've forgotten to break for the um, that's really a penalty that's very 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 naughty but it's not going to get away with it something to say you would not get away with that in an online uh, if you go up there, up that escape road, you're going to take a big penalty for it. So we're already in second, but we've only got to kind of the second proper ball in the Kerma Grand Day. So we the first chicane. This is where we went down on the car, but the best overtakes I've ever seen. It's the best day ever. Speed lovers track, it dares you to take a little bit more out of every single corner. And every corner is fast. And every track is fast. The last um, chicane coming up, and this is a really strange chicane that's absolutely huge. Uh, you can get carry a lot of speed through it usually. It's a nice thing in third gear because it's going to be probably a bit faster. And it's sort of immediately open to between another sort of chicane, so it's like a double chicane. And you can take a lot of speed through that, and then we're coming up to the final corner, which is the parabolical, which starts off as quite a sharp turn, but then it really starts to open up nicely as you get into the second part of the corner. So, the trick with this one is not so much the turning, but when you get that power back on, you see that's, that's the apex, you're already going past the apex. Should have got that power back on the next lap. So let's see how we're going. Um, we'll break for this time. You can see that yeah, that like the car gets squirrely up at the time as it motions the braking. But um, we'll 
break and stuff like that. Absolute carnage down there with all the cones and mess, uh, which I was a big part of, I'm sure. A bit more eagerness to get through the corner. It's not much of a corner that you can have around me and uh, this sort of car, but formula is entertaining. Oh, it's a tiny slip street battle down there. Oh, cuts it. Just avoided those big bollards, which we prefer. Line through there, cut most of the corner off, and keep up a lot of speed, which is helpful because the end of this is really on the straight. This is about to get an exit on every corner if you can, but particularly concentrate and focus on uh, those corners that then have a significant straight right after them. Just because you're going to be spending a lot of time at full throttle, and the quicker you get into that, the better you're going to save a lot of time by, by being a real of well. So occasionally there's corners where you think, you know, there's probably a faster line into that corner, but you'll take a, a deliberately slower line into the corner, just so that you can get a really good exit, because you know the exit's more important than that particular corner. Just about the minutes when it's back and do grip-wise, and you don't even need to use the full width of the circuit, because it's, it's, it's a circuit that's F1 grade, you know, it's, it's wide enough for, for those guys to take it flat out in a pubic little WRX. Level up, which is nice. I'm going to come out of this now and see if it's possible for us to get into the sport mode or so the online mode. That is really where this game um, is based. Although, having said that, you can see if you just look through, that's, that's the A class, so the beginning class. There's three more leagues then. Oh, with about. 15, 20 events in each. Plus you've got all the circuit experience, plus you've got all the driver missions, plus you've got all the license test. There's a fair amount of stuff just in the single player, even though it's not really what the game's aimed for. Um, and you can pick this game up real cheap at the moment. Uh, when I got it, I think I paid about 10, 12 pounds for it on the PlayStation Network, because it was on a sale. Um, but I would think with the PS5 launching soon, with Gran Turismo 7, um, gonna be a very early title on that. Um, then we should see pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap Gran Turismo Sport experience on the PlayStation Network. So we we unlocked a bunch of stuff there. We unlocked change drive, change driving gear, change helm and suit livery, uh, uh, Blue Moon Speedway, which is a nice original track. It's very similar to the old high speed ring with the infield section. So that's quite fun. And the Sakaba Circuit, which is a, a real Japanese circuit. So let's go into sport. This is really where the game down. It seems locked. What's, why is it locked? This feature can only be accessed after you've completed the sports project in chapter in racing etiquette. Right, so we need to do our, our racing etiquette lessons. Oh, what is sportsmanship? Video lesson. Now, this is where I'm probably going to get caught for a copyright strike because just playing straight videos of, from the game. It would be a shame, really, because my purpose with these was to try and edit what it together, is perhaps, into some sort of tutorials. What is Welcome to the Racing Etiquette. In this section, you will be learning about sportsmanship, an important element in everyone's participation in the online is. races of Gran Turismo. Is an important the history of sports is as old as human history, and the definition of sports is said to be as numerous as there are researchers in the field. 
But when you get to the bottom of it, a sport is a challenge against yourself, a challenge against a rival, and above all else, is something to enjoy and have fun with. A sport is something yes. you enjoy together with others. For this, there is sportsmanship, the attitude you must have when you partake in a sport. So, what is sportsmanship? Everyone knows that all sports have rules. And of course, one element of sports is that you must follow the rules. But even if you set lots of detailed rules, you can't judge all incidents during an actual sport just with rules. That's where sportsmanship becomes important. So essentially, sportsmanship can also be called the spirit of fair it's play. Impossible to properly enforce the and rules. in addition to being fair and in just, racing. sportsmanship also means racing, that you don't do things that you've make got, you look uh, bad. Marshals all around the track feeding information back to those stewards. You've got to avoid doing things to anyone track, that makes um, you look bad. You will. You will. S That's the core have, idea behind sportsmanship. That is beyond the rules. Uh, and the penalties can be quite severe in, in real racing. Motor sport is called a non-contact sport. In that online, means it is a sport yes, which should absolutely not that allow contact with it, others. That if it detects, uh, but in order to achieve this, issue, it is not enough to have a strict set of rules. There. I think that was it is extremely important that everyone works yeah, no. to avoid so doing see, things see that make you look bad. Yeah, I think I'll sort it out now. So we're gonna to have to watch these videos to get our qualification. Now, I'm also almost positive that these are gonna be copyright. Various strikes. improper driving examples. Should have probably done these off stream. Here we will introduce some examples of improper driving and driving that makes you look bad. Driving that makes you look bad. First of all, weaving back and forth to block the path of other cars is prohibited. Yeah, prohibited, but very hard to, um, very hard also, for an algorithm to pick others. up. That's easier for an algorithm to pick up, but as you'll see when we get into the online races, it doesn't always work well. Edging out others, pushing others off the track. When you are late on the brakes, yeah, it is not yeah, considered yeah, well-mannered driving. Overshooting a corner because you braked too late and failed to turn because you were too anxious to overtake your opponent. This is an example of driving that really makes you look bad. The worst is when you become a missile by not being able to stop within the track, ramming into other cars and ruining the race for others as well as yourself. Even if you initially had an understanding of all this in your head, if you become too overzealous in the race and ended up braking too late and you are about to hit the car ahead of you, not only should you hit your brakes, you should avoid hitting the car ahead at all cost, even if that means taking your car off the track. And this is what people won't do online very often. This type of driving yeah. mistake often happens when you are a beginner. So starting out, just very be careful. Very easy, particularly in these short sprint races. Avoid interfering well, with others and start by really assessing the situation impression. and you will On start to first, see first and be aware of your surroundings. 12, 16 cars going in. You're going to get and finally, a little, a little how can you protect collision. yourself from these it's types hard, of accidents? It's hard, very, very hard to always be perfect and, uh, you know, during a race, it is not easy to communicate well your intent with other drivers. But by monitoring the other cars around you, you I'm will start to understand the tendencies of each car and driver, the the as well as their skills. If you feel that a certain uh, driver seems a bit dangerous, or that a certain car is not used to racing yet, rethink so and reposition yourself on the track so that you can avoid being involved in the chaos that they may cause. Because that's only going to hurt them and it's not going to hurt the other person. Uh, it's still what you should do because you will lose sportsmanship points oh well, we get a free car for that do we do we get a nice polite lovely car no we've got a go-kart well that should be fun shift the car as well so it'll be a nippy little thing okay so I'm sure there'll be some races we can we can play with that later on.
Right, let's see if we can get into some online racing then. That would be nice, wouldn't Two. it? Very oh, I've got my run, 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 yeah. brother said to me like before the sun no sound. That definitely sounds like copyright music. In fact, I'm gonna go right away. Straight away and turn off those sounds so that the villains they return for the guard did stop dead on the phone in the back of night. Heard him shout and murder. Maybe a background music. Sorry, it was a lovely song, but if you can't hear it, it'll get us into trouble. So we're going to try and go into sport mode now. Let's see what races are available for us to enter. Uh, do, 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 do. We don't need to see too much of that. Um, okay, so I'm going to just... Um, I just pause the stream for a moment. I will come back, uh, but I'm just going to fill in that section and if that's going to have some personal info. Okay, so back after that short little delay. So it's just going to a little bit of information about we get basically we get two ranking systems in this. Um, you see, there's an, an one where I'm ranked at an E, and that is uh, my driver rating, which you'll improve by overtaking, um, getting good results on track, pole positions, that kind of thing. Fastest laps will get you a bit as well. Um, and then there's the one that says B with a little handshake on it, and that is my sportsmanship rating. Everyone starts out with B, you can go lower, you can go higher. Um, but we will see how we get on. So these events, they, these aren't on today, I don't think. I think the Nations Cup is tomorrow. I'm not sure when the exhibition series is. Uh, that looks like it's going to be on Saturday. Um, so we've just got the, the the daily races available to us as yet, and as we won't have a lot of cars, I'm not sure if we've got any we've got any Group Three race cars yet. Um, no, so uh, oh no, we haven't got anything that would fit that category, and we're probably going to have to um, we would probably have to again nothing for the big willow either. So we can do this one though, because this daily race has a um, uh, it gives you a car for it because it's it's a one make um, one make car. Let's have space ground metallic. Let's have a bit of that. So everybody's going to be driving the same car with the same tune, the same setup. There's nothing you can change in this. You can't change the tires. The only couple of things you can change uh, is the traction control, the brake balance. And um, I think that's oh the ABS. You could turn the ABS off if you want to. I'm gonna leave everything on to start with. We'll have a look at how fast that gets us, and then we'll have a look at um, turning some of those driver uh, aids off because generally, if you can drive around the issue, i.e., loss of loss of traction or uh, brakes locking up, if you can drive around it rather than have the driver aid do it for you, you will get a faster time. So what we get to do now, we get to set some quality laps. Um, the, the race is going to start in about nine minutes. 
and this is how all of the, the online races work. You get a, a qualifying period where it gives you a chance to practice the trap and also for you to set a qualifying time which will then be determined your grid position. on this first lap really we're just it's a bit of an experimental lap we're just finding our way around the track we're seeing what sort of levels of grip the car's got how the car likes to behave as you can see this is a car that likes to get back and down it likes to get back and down like that it also doesn't like to turn at the brake at all I 
quite a safe line there that I'm really just going to maximise my exit speed a bit. Um, again, probably not the fastest way to take that corner in tow, but what it does do is it lets you have the exit um, speed, which is which is really important. So probably didn't need to shift all the way down to third there, but it's it's right on the cusp of whether you do or not to get one of the hard safe. That's going to affect our pull out corners a little bit, it's going to affect our traction a little bit. Um, we won't spin as much in theory, we won't spin the wheels so up, we'll lose traction that way, but what we, what we don't have is full, um, uh, full control of the bike, the brakes, or the accelerator, because the computer is going to try and control the bike too much in. But it'll also probably take you know, that final tenth away from Last night there, so just be careful because it's the right X. I can't almost run to it. Fox's skill is going to be more early. Likewise, this one will return into the uh, front corner to the deckness. I can't remember that one is wrong. But yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one. That's something that was there. First, first thing I found moving from a, a controller to a wheel was how much harder it is to catch the slides. Because with a controller, you've probably got a little bit of software in the background as well, just helping you kind of move your inputs out and make more like a steering wheel and a directional pad. But the other thing is a, 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 a controller doesn't snap back at you. You don't get a, the, the controller doesn't suddenly just try and launch itself, you know, the other uh, direction. So controlling the slides um, is a lot harder at first with the wheel because you've got to get used to how that, that feels and this isn't a particularly strong force feedback wheel um, some of them will snap your arm off some of them are super super powerful I mean they fit emergency stop buttons on these things um, I hate to think what sort of scenario that would, we would be in to end up needing to use the emergency stop button on one but they are super powerful motors and some Okay, so we've uh, we've qualified fourth actually. That's a lot higher than I expected to qualify with that sort of time. Um, we've got a few people who are not set a qualifying time at all, so they've just come straight into the straight into the race. Um, 
without bothering to do the practice qualifying. Nice little gang of British guys up there. Um, Dan Shanker, 69. Sounds delightful. Take him home to your mother, wouldn't you? Um, and a... I'm going to say German, but I could get it mixed up for Belgium because I never get the flags right. I think that's a German flag, is it? At the top there. For Adam Dude, 86. So, 86, probably his birth year. 69, probably not Dan Shanker's birth, their birth year. But you do get a lot. Of, look, we've got 84, 85, 86. I'm 83. Um, it, we've got a lot of older players uh, in Gran Turismo. So, it does, does, I guess, appeal to the older gamer. It's been out. But the series has been running now for 23 years. So, if you're as old as I am, then he was probably playing it when he was a teenager. Still playing it now. Race, 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 race. This is exciting. So stand and start. Now I've got traction control on, switched on on this car, so I can probably just floor him and it's not going to make much of a difference. I will try and roll the throttle just a little bit. Even with traction control, you can usually get a slight amount of So I won't take much of a but near enough. So you can see, I just think I've got the slight jump on that right next to me. Just at the worst moment, so that's going to be a penalty. We've got a penalty in our first, in our first race, which is less than ideal. Because what we're trying to do, of course, is focus on our sportsmanship and not so much the driving ability. So I will pass cars if I get an easy opportunity to. However, it's not really my main objective today. So he's totally outbreaked himself. This is what you're going to get down these lower leagues. As I said, I've not played a lot of, uh, a lot of Gran Turismo sport yet, so I've not really played any high level races. I've got to get actual good drivers. We don't have to be one myself to start that. But I'm hoping that we can at least get ourselves out of the very, very long run and get ourselves up to a kind of probably a B rank, an A rank, I think an S rank is unlikely, but that's still good. Penalty in the next line, but I've got to penalise myself anyway just by going massively wide into spoon as usual. What I didn't do though was use the car in front of me as a brake, which is, is tempting, but it's not very fair as it's going to be. It's going to be completely screwed up absolutely everything. It just won't stop spinning. This is what I mean about turning the wheel. On a controller, I'd have caught that straight away. It wouldn't have even really been a spin. There's the full speed production. So now I am plumb last. I'm 27 seconds behind. This has been a horrendous but predictable first race. Where is that lost there? We've got two laps left after this one. We can make up some places. What I'm going to try and do though is try and avoid getting any more penalties because I'm really going to make the race of some strength on it. So it's nice to see I'm not the only person who struggles with the M3. Finds the brakes a little bit in the building. And finds the fact that you can't turn at all with the brakes on and you just still need a little bit also so challenging. Last week's daily race for these lower model cars was in the mini. And we proved that lots of fun. Well, 
box. Now she gets us back into eighth position. I was trying to come in super early. I was trying to come super early because I could see that guy right behind me. I was thinking he is going to come on my backside. Um, that somehow managed to get away without him. Strange because there is times in the family that the deck list. there's not a lot of corners really that do save it. Like, but sharp 90 degree turns like the deck list, they can be sort of corner that you might get an advantage from. Uh, I'm sure it's going to I did have one because it was causing it to, it was to spin and all sorts of traction. But, uh, see the big the cloud of the brakes and all Sports where, in theory, there shouldn't be a huge physical advantage. In practice, when you, when you get up to the um, very, very high, very, very quick leagues, um, there is a kind of strength implication because it's a very strong neck, of the body, arms, that kind of thing, um, to, to withstand the G force essentially. That's not to say that. A woman couldn't do it, a woman actually could, I'm not talking like you need to be Jeff Cage strong or anything like that. Uh, it's just a slight, going to be slightly harder um, to train with. Right, so. yeah, everything else is in life, much, much harder. Now that was important, what I just did there should have lost me sportsmanship, because that was an unsportsman like I would say. I really went with the inside of it. He's got a penalty for it. You see the penalty system in this game is not working particularly well. I would be quite upset if I was him, because I didn't get a penalty for the cheap and the right on him, which while well, wasn't quite enough to leave him revenge, it was really that started it, wasn't it? We finished seven, so we dropped a few places there. We did get a penalty. Not an ideal way, so. But it's what it is. Let's see what's going on. Okay, no worries. So, unfortunately, I am using my, uh, my mobile phone as a webcam, and it is not receiving enough power uh, through what I've got it plugged into, so it needs charging. So we're not going to get camera for a little while. Um, never mind. I will just, um, just move the 
this out of the way. Let's get that obscured. Never mind, that's fine. Uh, nobody's watching anyway. Well, one person's watching, but whether you're watching or not, or whether you're a bot, I'm not sure. Because nobody said anything in the chat. But never mind, we're going to do a little bit more of this. So we'll enter that race again. And we'll have another little go at it. And do a bit more qualifying on it. Because really that wasn't a great performance, was it? It'd be nice to do a bit better than that. And then I think after that I should probably wrap up this stream for the night. We'll have done about two hours. And it's been an interesting experience talking to myself. Um, but that's practice. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to practice talking, driving. Trying to teach you a little bit about the game. And show you things about how things work. And how driving games in general work. Um, ultimately my goal with this is more to make kind of tutorial videos and that kind of thing. Um, rather than just purely stream. Although we'll see how it goes. We'll see, we'll see how things um, go once we try and do a little bit of self-promotion and try and get a few more viewers. Because we've deliberately not done that. Um, I've, I've kind of just wanted to do this almost knowingly talking to myself. Uh, purely for the practice so that I can watch it back and have a little look and see did I do that okay did I, did I talk confidently and correctly was I stuttering all over the place all that kind of stuff before you get to the corner. And on a lot of corners you can't even really leave anything in to try and break. On some you can, but particularly some of those like sharp right handers, if you leave any break on them going into that, you're just going to stop it down. every corner so next lap what we're going to try is going super slowly or what feels super slowly around everything it's going to be one of those car track combos where you feel like you've just tootled around it like you're doing a shopping on a Sunday afternoon but actually that's the way to get faster because if you push the car will push back Not necessarily learning how fast we can through everything, but where there's potential for time, where the car's not just wanting to get screwed in and feet straight away. There's some corners on the track. Yeah. That one actually, the, the last um, the last chicane, I feel like there's a good bit of time in there probably. Uh, because you can trail break a little bit into that one. Turn one in most cars, I would um, have a trail break and I would 
progressively great through the, the sort of different sections of turn one because it comes at you like sort of almost like three different bits. Um, I'm not doing that in the time. I've got my braking done for the first turn in and then just one tiny bit of braking when the car straightens back up again. But yeah, it's a lot slower than the general entry line will take that point out. So a lot of cars will get away with braking um, continuously through the corner and scrubbing some of that speed up. This one we not that option, so you kind of have to get more, more speed up in the initial than you could. instance there of course, not least between Senna and Prost. Uh, it was very naughty things with each other in consecutive years of championships. Coming to a head with Senna, but an absolutely indefensible pump of Prost off the track on the last race of the season. Uh, yeah. yeah, one of the more controversial of his career because I mean to be honest he could have killed him it's, it's, it's not the sort of not a very safe corner to knock somebody off but as he always said the racer goes for the gaps so we're up against qualifying times of about 2.24 in this and that guy has got a driver rating of B not many E-class driver ratings in here there's three of us um, so if that's B I would imagine the sort of A times and the S times, because we're going to have a look. Um, they're actually going to then be in the sort of two teens, maybe 218, 216 even. We'll have to see. There are, of course, some, some freakishly good players out there who can get high in, in strange, strange places. Best qualifiers, not always the best, um, best races in the no, I don't do the warm-ups. Um, I just find that they could, they they don't add a lot, especially in these uh, these races where there's no pit stop. If there's a pit stop in the race, then maybe it's not a bad idea to do the warm-up because you'll get a feel for the pit exit with other cars around you and what that's going to be like in the race. Um, 
but in this we're going to get 40 seconds come out of the pit completely different speed to how we would normally come out of that pit lane and then have a totally different approach into the next corner so that's tends to be why i just avoid the warm-ups because they will mess with your head in that you'll be trying to do a completely different racing lane and also players you know just tend to use that as a as a moment or two of just bashing cars around a bit silly with it so we'll do this race we'll have this this final race and uh, then we'll wrap the stream up for the night and that will be um just about two hours that i've managed to play the game and waffle on about absolute nonsense but um, to the one viewer who was probably supposed to be watching if you're not what then thank you leave some feedback if you've got hands Yes. 
last in because he was um, forced to have a, a reset it looks like. Yeah, he was slightly quicker for me in a, in a few of the turns uh, that I've seen him pass through so that's potentially worrying for me that two weeks ago. Oh, it's a line me. slowly and I've just been tapped and taken out there. He's got a penalty for that. It's kind of my fault because I was going so slowly but then it's his job as the car behind me to, to avoid that and you know, get, kind of get out of the way. He's just took another penalty somewhere, I'm not sure where. Um, and he's really braked a lot harder than I expected from that so I've had to, to break very, very hard then to avoid through there and get a little bit of a slide on. Didn't want to do it because it would potentially have me hitting the back of that car in front. So I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore, is it? Because the track's going to get into a slip stream. Not that there's much of a slip stream effect. The cars are just power. I think it's even. I think the slip stream's going potentially turn down. So all three of us then are still turning on. Clever defensive lines. This is just sort of way moving around. So he had to come back for a little nip there. It was, it's so obvious that he marked my corner. I've got more, I've carried more speed through it, and he's had a little go wide. He tried to take me off there as well, didn't he? He missed. That's what's going to be for him. See that? They go flying off. Well, it's just, I mean, it's so childish, and yes, that person may be an actual child, so uh, that's the joy of online gaming. What gets very frustrating is where you see good, competent racers who have clearly got some skills doing it, getting up into the higher leagues and stuff, and then you even get guys who will try and predict where they're going to get a penalty, how the penalty system's going to react to what they do. Seek advantage from that, which just makes the game unenjoyable for basically everybody apart from that one guy who's decided to be a dick. One of the best feelings in gaming is when you've got a real tight battle between you, and you pass them and they pass you and you pass them again. You, know, you go through all that stuff and yeah, keep it clean and respectful. Always. My God. <laughs> well, that was a big time, so I'm going to stay off the racing line now. Uh, let those cars go past me because it's only fair. That was my screw up. I went wide. I, I had the spin. Stay off the racing line and don't put in there by blocking them. Straight into those places? Yeah, but there you go. I had a spin. So we finished fifth there, I'm happy with that. I didn't get any penalties throughout, um, so I should have hopefully increased my sportsmanship rate a little bit, which would be nice. And, um, yeah. So we'll have a look at the sportsmanship rating as it's come to. When the results are finished. Um, and it was fifth, there was nobody ahead of me who had to serve any major penalties or anything like that to give me an extra place. Um, but yeah, fifth is fine. Not worried about that at all. I'm not expecting to be winning races straight away. We'll have to sort of build up to that. And um, if this was a car in a track that I was confident and familiar with, um, well, I am familiar with the track, but not so much the car. If it was one that suited my style a lot, then I would hope to be pulling in wins probably around the fifth or sixth race. You know, once I've got a decent quality time down and stuff, then I'd be looking, looking to try and uh, get some wins there. So hopefully we can get a win or two out of this track at some point. It's not my favourite, and I think what I'm going to have to do 
um, at some point is earn enough money to buy us a group four car so we can do the other race that is at um, uh, Red Bull Ring. Red Bull Ring, that's it. So let's just have a quick look at what the average sort of price of a, of a group four car is before we, um, before we wrap up the stream for the night. So let's say... Well, let's have a, let's have a look at our favourite car, the BMW, the BMW M3, because I think I might have a Group 3 or a Group 4 version. Uh, but there'll certainly be those level cars within the BMW dealership. So, showroom. And we're looking for that Group 4, I think, for that for those races. So, 350,000. Now, I've got 300,000 already. So, literally, it's going to be a case of doing a few more of those licences. Um, or a couple more online races just to build that build that credit up um, and we will be able to do some races at uh, the Red Bull Ring in the next stream so yeah thanks to the to the to the bot I believe who, who came into the stream don't know why don't know why anyone sends a bot into the stream or what that's all about but it's been fun talking and um, yeah I'll be back again